Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 49 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to focus on the topic of error intervals. So we're going to look at how to answer some error interval questions. And in this video, I'm going to give you lots to try yourself, so remember to press pause and to try those questions out. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to look at error intervals. So we've got our first question here. It says the length of a line, L centimeters, is measured as 18 centimeters correct to the nearest centimeter. So in other words, whenever this line is measured, it's 18 centimeters to the nearest centimeters. So whenever it's rounded, it's 18 centimeters. Whenever it's been rounded to the nearest centimeter. And we've been asked to use inequalities to write down the error interval for L. So let's start off by considering what length the line could be. So for instance, it could be exactly 18 centimeters. It could be 17.9 centimeters, because that would round up to 18 centimeters. It could be 17.6 centimeters. It could even be 17.5 centimeters, but it couldn't be anything below this. So for instance, it couldn't be 17.49 centimeters, because that would round down to 17 centimeters rather than up to 18. So it could be any of these values, but it couldn't be this. So it has to be, the length of the line has to be greater than or equal to 17.5 centimeters. Now, in terms of above 18 centimetres, because obviously the line could be longer than 18 centimetres and round down to 18 centimetres, so it could be 18.1 centimetres, it could be 18.4 centimetres, it could be 18.4999 centimetres, but it couldn't be 18.5 centimetres. So it could be 18.1, 18.4, it could be 18.4999, but it couldn't be 18.5 because 18.5 would round up to 19 centimetres. So in terms of our error interval, the length of the line L is anything that is greater than or equal to 17.5 centimetres, but it's got to be less than 18.5 centimetres. It goes anything up to, but not including 18.5 centimetres. So that's the error interval for the length of the line. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, our next question says, Amelia rounds a number Y, so she's got a number Y, and she rounds it to one decimal place, and her result is 6.4. Write down the error interval for Y. So feel free to press pause now and write down the error interval for Y. Okay, so in terms of Amelia's number Y, well, it's been rounded to one decimal place to be 6.4. So it could be 6.4 exactly, and she rounds it to one decimal place, and it'll be 6.4. But it could be even numbers below 6.4. For instance, it could be 6.39, that would round up to 6.4. It could be 6.37. It could even be 6.35, because that would round up to 6.4 to one decimal place. But it couldn't be anything below this. For instance, it couldn't be 6.349. That would round down to 6.3 rather than up to 6.4. So it means that y has got to be greater than or equal to 6.35. Now, in terms of the numbers above 6.4, well, it could be 6.41. It could be 6.44. It could be 6.4499 because that would round down to be 6.4 rather than up to 6.5. But it couldn't be 6.45 because that would round up to be 6.5 rather than down to be 6.4. So that means our error interval for y would be y would have to be greater than or equal to 6.35. But it's got to be less than 6.45. And that's it. So y is going to be greater than or equal to 6.35 but less than 6.45. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, Josh rounds a number n to two decimal places, and the result is 70.92. Write down an error interval for n. So feel free to press pause now and write down the error interval for n. So in terms of n, his number, well, he's rounding it to two decimal places. So for instance, it could be 70.92. It could be that number. And when he rounds it to two decimal places, he would get that number. But it could be numbers below this. So for instance, it could be 70.919. That would round up to be 70.92 to two decimal places. And it could be anything as low as 70.915. Because that would be the lowest number that would round up to be 70.92. Okay, in terms of numbers above 70.92, it could be 70.924. It could be 70.92499, because that would round down to be 70.92. But it couldn't be 70.925, because that would round up to be 70.93, rather than down to be 70.92. So that means that N, Josh's number, would have to be greater than or equal to 70.915, but less than 70.925. And that's it. That's the error interval for Josh's number n. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, the length of each side of a regular hexagon is 3.6 centimetres to one decimal place. Write down an error interval for the perimeter, p. Okay, so let's just do a little sketch. I'm just going to do a little sketch of a regular hexagon. So here we've got a regular hexagon here. And obviously with a regular hexagon, all the sides have got the same length. And we've been asked to find an error interval for the perimeter, p, so the perimeter of this hexagon. So we want to consider the lowest possible perimeter and what the perimeter can go up to. And we've been told that the length of each side of the regular hexagon is 3.6 centimetres to one decimal place. So let's call each side S, and each side it would have to be greater than or equal 
to 3.55 because each side would hit the lowest possible length it could be that would round to 3.6 to one decimal place would be 3.55 centimeters and the length of each side could go up to but not include 3.65 centimeters so that's the error interval for each side now in terms of the perimeter because we've got six sides and they've all got the same length we could just multiply these by six and that would give us the perimeter of the shape for instance if each side was 3.55 centimeters 3.55 centimeters 3.55 centimeters 3.55 centimeters 3.55 centimeters and 3.55 centimeters if we add those all up or take 3.55 and multiply that by six that'll give us the smallest possible perimeter for this regular hexagon so let's do that and that's equal to 21.3 centimeters so that means in terms of our perimeter the perimeter would have to be greater than or equal to 21.3 centimeters okay so that's the smallest possible perimeter now let's consider what the perimeter could go up to but not include so the length of each side would be 3.65 centimeters it can go up to 3.65 centimeters It'd be 3.65 3.65 up to 3.65 up to 3.65 and up to 3.65 so we can go up to but not include 3.65 so if we take our 3.65 and multiply that by 6 that'll give us what the perimeter could go up to so 3.65 multiplied by 6 is equal to 21.9 centimeters so the perimeter could go up to but not include 21.9 centimeters so the error interval for the perimeter of the hexagon would be p is greater than or equal to 21.3 centimeters but less than 21.9 centimeters and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, man jogs 200 meters to the nearest 10 meters, and it takes him 40 seconds to the nearest 10 seconds. Work out the error interval for his speed S. So feel free to press pause now to try this question. Okay, so let's start off by looking at how far the man jogs. So the man jogs 200 meters to the nearest 10 meters. So in terms of his distance he runs, the distance he runs, well, the distance is greater than or equal to 195 meters because anything below that would round down to be 190 meters and 195 meters would be the first number that would round up to be 200 meters to the nearest 10 meters. And it'd be anything up to, but not including 205 meters because for instance, 204.99 would round down to be 200 meters to the nearest 10 meters. So it'd be anything up to, but not including 205 meters. Okay, now in terms of the time taken, it takes him 40 seconds to the nearest 10 seconds. So it could take him 39 seconds, 37 seconds, 36 seconds. It could even take him 35 seconds, but nothing below 35 seconds. So the time taken has got to be greater than or equal to 35 seconds. And in terms of times greater than 40 seconds, it could take him 40 seconds, or 41, or 42, or 43, or 44, or 44.98, or 44.998, and so on but it couldn't take him 45 seconds so anything up to but not including 45 seconds so up to the time is going to be less than 45 seconds so we've got the error intervals for the distance and the time now we've been asked to work out the error intervals for the speed so in terms of a speed well so remember the speed is equal to distance divided by time so we need to divide the distances by the time to find the error interval for the man's possible speeds okay so let's now find the lower bound and the upper bound for the man's speed so in terms of the lower bound well, that'll be the lowest distance in the greatest time so if we do 100 195 divided by 45 that'll give us the lower bound for his speed so 195 divided by 45 will be equal to 4.333 and so on meters per second so that's the lower bound for his speed and in terms of the upper bound for speed, well, that would be the greatest distance in the shortest time. So it would be 205 divided by 35. And if we do 205 meters divided by 35 meters, it would be 5.8571428587 and so on meters per second. So we've now got the lower bound and the upper bound for the speeds. So that means his speed, well, the speed would be greater than 4.333 and so on meters per second. That's the lower bound for his speed. But it's going to be less than 5.857142 and so on meters per second. And we could write these as mixed numbers, actually. The speed is greater than four and a third meters per second. And the speed is less than five and six sevenths meters per second. And that's the error interval for speed. Now, in terms of the inequality symbols here, we've got the speed is greater than four and a third, and it's less than five and six sevenths meters per second. And the reason is when 
whenever we're doing our divisions, but we've got the 195 divided by 45. Well, it can't actually be 45 seconds. It's going to be slightly under that. And if you actually choose a number just slightly under that, then actually what happens is here is the speed increases. So it can't actually be 4.33 and so meters per second. It's, it's anything just slightly above it. And likewise, for the upper bound for the speed, we've done 205 meters divided by 35 meters. It can't actually be 205 meters, anything up to that. So if you were to do something just slightly under 205 divided by 35, would be anything that goes up to but not include 5.857 and so meters per second and that's why they are the greater than and less than symbols there okay let's have a look at our last question okay let's have a look at our last question so this time we've got the radius of a circle is four centimeters to the nearest centimeter find the error interval for the circumference of the circle and to give your answer in terms of pi so it's a non-calculator question so put your calculator down and press pause and try this question now Okay, so to find the circumference of the circle, circumference equals pi times diameter. So we want to do pi times diameter to get the circumference of the circle. So let's consider the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle could be exactly 4 centimeters. It could be 3.9 centimeters. It could be 3.7 centimeters. It could be as low as 3.5 centimeters, but it couldn't be anything below that. So the radius would have to be greater than or equal to 3.5 centimeters. Now in terms of above 4 centimeters, it could be 4.1 centimeters. It could be 4.4 centimeters. It could be 4.499 centimeters, but it couldn't be 4.5 centimeters because that would round up to be 5 centimeters, not 4 centimeters. So that means the error interval for the radius would be, the radius would be greater than or equal to 3.5 centimeters but less than 4.5 centimeters. So that's the error interval for the radius. Now in terms of the diameter, well the diameter is double the radius, that means the diameter would have to be greater than or equal to 7 centimeters, because if we double 3.5, that's 7 centimeters. And if we double our 4.5 centimeters, that's 9 centimeters. So the radius can be anything up to, but not including 9 centimeters. So if the radius is between 3.5 and, and 4.5 and centimeters, the diameter would be between 7 and 9 centimeters. Okay, now we want to find the possible circumference of the circle. Well, circumference equals pi times diameter. So if the diameter is equal to 7 centimeters, we would do pi times 7 which would be equal to 7 pi centimeters. And if the diameter is equal to 9 centimeters, we would do pi times 9, which would be equal to 9 pi centimeters. So that means the error interval for the circumference of the circle would be, the circumference is greater than or equal to 7 pi centimeters, and it would be less than 9 pi centimeters. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at error intervals. We've looked at how to answer some questions, and you've tried some yourself. I really hope you found this video useful. And if you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And obviously, there's 49 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. So we're in that final, you know, the second half. And I keep up the hard work. You're doing really, really, really well. In the description below is the practice questions. So feel free to give those a shot. But also remember at this point, to be doing things like your five a day. So the, for GCSE higher, you want to be doing your foundation plus your higher and your higher plus five a days. So keep the work up with those and that little and often approach. And also at this point too, you might be sort of considering getting into, sucking into your past papers. So keep up the hard work with those as well. So I'll see you tomorrow for 48 days to go to your GCSE maths. Cheers. Bye.